Hi Floss Tube. So today I'm doing a video I've been meaning to do forever, which is a little look into my stash cupboard. Now, when we say stash cupboard, look, I'm not really a stasher. I don't really hoard stuff. I'm pretty frugal when it comes to stashing. So it's not going to be looking at a whole lot of patterns and thousands of threads or anything like that. I mean, I've got a bit of stuff, but it's maybe a little bit more about how I organize it and how I keep it so compact. I don't know. It's a little insight into whatever my craft cupboard is. Anyway, my voice might sound a bit, uh, a bit off today because I'm not that well, which is another good reason to do a video where I'm not on camera. So I will be doing an update um, hopefully in the next couple of days when I'm feeling a little bit more camera friendly. Um, but in the meantime, we're just going to have a look in my cupboard. So this is the front entrance of my house. There's my front door. There's my bedroom. Oh, I'll show you cross stitch right there. That's our wedding sampler. And this is our hallway. And two of my favorite pieces hang in our hallway, right outside my stash closet. There's Macintosh Mill. Finished about, oh, I don't know, maybe two years ago, 18 months, maybe two years. Macintosh Mill, love that piece. And over here is Battle of Hastings, which was actually finished a year ago yesterday. It was framed thing popped up on my Facebook reminding me. So both of those hang outside my stash closet, my craft cupboard as I call it. And I love looking at them all the time. There's Battle of Hastings. Love that piece. So those are probably my two, my two favorite finishes. Anyway, this here, I hope I don't make you all dizzy. This is the craft cupboard. So in the front entrance of our house, it's like a cloak closet. Now this used to have our Christmas decorations in it. So the Christmas tree in the box and all the Christmas decorations and all that sort of stuff. And then I used to have my craft stuff in our spare room, but that got turned into an office and blah, 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 blah. I had this just genius idea one day and I said to my husband, the Christmas cupboard is going to become my craft, craft closet, craft cupboard. I can't talk today. Anyway, and I love it and it's perfect. It's compact and it makes use of an otherwise sort of weed spot because we don't wear coats in Australia. Anyway, so we open it up and it's kind of like this corner. It's a corner cupboard. If I can show you, I'll turn the light on. It's got a light, which is awesome. And everything is in here. So I'll just give you a bit of a brief look. Up the top there. There's a hanging rail, and then there's all my stuff. And just over here. So I hope that makes sense. So it's sort of like a corner. Now I'll go through it, I'll go through it systematically and I'll talk and whatever, I'll just blab on. So if you want to hear me blab about my cupboard, which I could do probably for hours, I won't do it for hours, but anyway. <laughs> so up the top. Okay, so up the top is where I keep all my bits of foam and bits and pieces. There's also a Xbox game up there which will become my son's one day when I decide to give him Minecraft. So it's also my hiding things from him cupboard. Um, so I've got bits of foam up there that I can use to make um, no so cubes and there's bits of uh, foam core board and mat and all sorts of stuff. So that's just where I keep those bits and pieces that we need. There's um, some brown paper there that I used to back on some of my frames. Um, <laughs> I didn't know what that was. There's a letter to Santa from last year. <laughs> I've stashed that up there because obviously I posted that to Santa Claus. Um, I've got some spare um, floss boxes up here that just aren't being used at the moment. This is a picture that my... <laughs> My friend from high, well, my friend from primary school, she stitched it when she was, let me say, 13 years old. And she gave me all her craft stuff, so, and that was in it. And I said, I will keep it forever and treasure it, and I bring it out at Easter. So he just sits up there. This is my no so cube that I made Christmas before last, I think. And I love that. Dear Santa. 
This is nice so cute that I made that I just sort of put up there till Christmas. This is my son's floss box. <laughs> it's got some floss in it that I don't really like. I don't know, some unnumbered satins, I think, and metallics and bits and pieces anyway. Um, if he wants to play cross stitch, I just give him that. And another floss box up there. So anyway, that's just what I keep up the top. Well, this is going to be fun to put everything back one handed. I don't think I will cry. Gosh, I hope I don't make you feel sick. Some bucket that I just swear will be used for one day. I think it had flowers in it once. So, that's the top shelf. Oh, and these two fellas over here. These are two cushions that I made when I was mm, young. Let me think. I don't know, 14 or 15. Cross stitch those. That is on. That was the first time I ever used 18 count. And when I first stitched it, I stitched the four centre ones. The, that, that, that and that. And it was only that big and I wanted it to make a cushion. So I stitched all these and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, that is so much more work. <laughs> Took me ages. Anyway, it turned out really good. And um, mum made it into a cushion. I don't know. I would have been, I don't know, 14 or 15 or something. And they were just cottons from whatever. I didn't buy anything specific. I just... Use what we had. And here is my unicorn cushion, which I absolutely loved when I was about 15. Um, I think we dyed the fabric ourselves. It was meant to be navy, but as you can see, it is really faded. It was probably closer to the backing originally. Oh, anyway, it was lovely. And I'm pretty sure that was from a Better Homes and Gardens magazine, which I've probably still got in my stash somewhere. Anyway. Love that. Anyway, so they just sit up the top because I don't really go with my home decor, but, oops, sorry, <laughs> but I couldn't possibly part with them. Whoop! I don't know why I'm trying to put things back with one hand. I should just leave them on the ground, shouldn't I? Okay, so that is the top shelf. Now we go down to, I have a coat rail along here, which is, well, turned out to be fantastically handy. I already had this floss hanging system set up in our spare cupboard, um, but this is such, oh, I just think this is the most efficient use of this cupboard that I've got this way of hanging up my floss. Now I've got, I've done a whole video on how I made up this floss storage system, so I won't go through it all again, but basically all the numbers, all the DMC, I've got basically a full set missing a couple here and there, that one's missing. 422 is missing, that's because I've used that in Celtic Christmas, I'm sure. Oh, that one's a bit... Hmm. Anyway, um, so basically all the standards, some variegated... Whoa, one-handed is just going to be dangerous. Okay, sorry, I just had to edit out me crashing and burning the place down. No, just dropping stuff. Um, so, yeah, the DMC, all the solids and some satins there and some of the color variations as well and i also have a lanam, uh, laminated <laughs> um the dmc shoppers checklist which you can download from their website and i use that to mark off the ones that i need to go and replace so you can see with a whiteboard marker so if they come on sale or whatever i can go and replace the numbers Try and keep that up to date. Not very good at that. So, that's there. Over here, there's Gypsy Queen. Isn't she beautiful? She is hanging up here because she's beaded. I don't want to roll her up. I'm about to order her frame, so she will be getting frames soon. But in the meantime, she gets to hang up here nice and flat. I've already ironed her. I've already ironed on the... Um, I use uh, a... Oh, what is it? Interfacing. <laughs> Lost the word. So that has a very light iron-on interfacing that I've attached to the back. You can barely see it. Oh, I'm showing the back of my work. Whatever. Um, but I've already ironed that on in preparation for framing. So she's ready to go. So this is just where I hang up anything that's got beads on it. I've also just stitched a couple of little Christmas decorations. They've got beads on them, so I've just hung that there as well. 
um, little Christmas decorations I'm working on over the next few months. So that's where I hang my beaded projects. There's just that. And on the other end of the rail are my show ribbons that I won last year, which I'm very proud of. <laughs> um, champion of, now you all know where I live, Wagga Wagga. We don't call Wagga Wagga Wagga. Um, that was for the Open. That was for Grand Champion. I won Grand Champion for Macintosh Mill. I won um, District Champion for Macintosh Mill. And I won Open Champion for this little pink cushion. Can you believe I'm using something I won an Open Champion for? <laughs> anyway, that's my little sweetheart tree. Lavender Blossom, I think it's called. That's my little sweetheart tree. Biscornu and I just adore it and I thought about not using it but I have to I mean it's what it's made for and it's just so beautiful and anyway so that sits up there oh and this is the little mermaid um counting pin that we got at the uh, Mirabilia retreat and I just sit her in there because she's beautiful I don't use counting pins but I love her um there's my tape measure that I also won at the retreat for Gypsy Queen got a magnet on the back anyway that's just sitting there at the moment and I've got I only own two Q snaps because I'm a scroll frame girl but I kind of am enjoying using Q snaps just on small projects they just seem really it's just so easy to just pick up a Q snap and just stitch for a short time whereas a scroll frame you feel like you're sort of setting up for a bit of a longer stitching session so sometimes yeah I do like to pick up a Q snap my favourite size is the 11 by 11 there at the back, which doesn't have a grand guard because I only own one grand guard for my little 8 by 8 But that's cool. Anyway, so those are my two Q-snaps and they just sit up there on top of my DMC bobbin drawer. So my bobbin drawer, uh, I bought this from Fox Collections um, when they had it half price, I think. Fox Collections is a um, mail order catalogue and online craft store in Australia. And that's where I used to buy all my stuff when I was a kid. I used to mail order stuff from Fox Collections and they're still around. And they've got a pretty good range. Prices are probably a little bit a little bit high, but they're not crazy. And they often have good sales. And this was on half price. I think it was about 70 bucks for this set of drawers. And I love it. It's so cute. Look how cute it is. And there's all my bobinated floss. Um, so my system of using my my floss is that I have my collection here which I like to keep roughly a full set you know I'm not too stringent about that I've, I've got lots of doubles of things here and you know I went on a bit of a floss frenzy uh, a couple of years ago there's quite a few gaps in the collection now but I'm very lucky to have all those but so when I kit up a project I I take a skein from here and as I need to use that color I bobinate so I don't bobinate until I'm actually literally going to start stitching that symbol so um so i've got some here older ones which are on paper but i prefer the plastic and i like the sticker numbers so i'm slowly switching my whole system over to the stickers on the plastic um, bobbins and that works really well for me so i've got that drawer all in alphabetical i mean numerical um so two drawers I think I've got of the stamp I've gone to four. No, sorry, only two. So two drawers full of solids. Uh, I've got an empty drawer, which I'm about to start filling in there. In here I've got some light effects and some DMC satins, and there's a Kranich there, and there's some variations in there as well. So they're just sort of some more specialty DMC. And I think there's my extra bobbins my bobbin winder which I don't use but will keep forever I don't know why that's in there that can just get thrown out what on earth is that I'm gonna throw it out now on the floor uh, there's a couple of anchor variations that are in there um, and that's all the drawers um, I'll just show you over here so over here I've got just a couple of little things hanging up inside the cupboard it's my Pyrex stitches my little logo type thing that I came up with about three years ago, however long I've been doing this. Hang on, how long have I been doing this? 
2014, I think I started August. Is that right? So, 17, yeah, so three years. So I've been making videos three years this August. Yeah, so there you go. Um, so I designed this. Now, the Pyrex, the Pyrex um, there is actually, well, basically very similar to the um, Pyrex, their logo. And then the stitches, I just, um, I designed that. The word stitches with a metallic needle. Um, I really like it. I don't know where to hang it or what to do with it. And maybe I should put it on the opening of my videos. I don't know. Maybe I will. Um, anyway, that's two of my favorite things anyway. Pyrex and stitching. Over there is my very first cross stitch. Let me see if I can get closer. She's in the corner. I can probably get it out. So this um, little Siamese kitten, this was a kit that my grandmother gave me. I don't know what I was, somewhere around the age of 10. And um, it was a kit with two, look how dirty that floss is there. <laughs> it was a kit with two um, designs in it. The Siamese licking up the milk here and there was also one of a Siamese looking face on and I'm pretty sure I gave that one to my grandmother as a gift. Anyway, so that just hangs up in there. And there. Uh, that's another little piece that I stitched a long time ago when I was, you know, 14 or whatever. Um, just hangs in there because where else do you put it? Uh, that's a card that I got sent by a friend for my um, success at the show last year and those are just some of my little certificates from that the other ones I stuck on the back of the pieces um, I'll show you what else is on my little top of my set of uh, shelves here so there's my project roll that I made um, a couple of months ago using Vonna's uh, tutorial hi Vonna Love your tutorials. Love this. Love this project rock. Oh, I love it. I just want to carry it around and hold it and hug it and love it forever. So all my whips are rolled up in there. You can see that's the end of one of them there. Save the stitches is it. And that just sits up there where I can easily grab it. If the house is on fire, I will grab that and run out and everything will be fine because all the photos are digital in the cloud. So all I need to do is grab that. Um, and I've got... A pet rock that I randomly made like eight years ago or something <laughs> at my husband and our first home anyway <laughs> he sits there um, my notebook where I often make notes in that before I make my videos my iPhone box because where else do you put it spare pens and highlighters and pencils and whatever back there um, and then I've got my just move my floss out of the way and then I have my magazine. I have some magazines and books here. Um, I probably don't have a lot in, compare, in comparison to a lot of people. Anyway, I've got some books. That's 200 cross-stitch, 2,000 cross-stitch designs. It's just a whole lot of small motifs. It's actually really, I really like this book. Just because it's full of just handy little bits and pieces. Because I do quite like making... Sorry, I am hope you're not being sick right now. I won't pull everything out because that'll be impossible and we will be feeling ill. Um, oh, Fox Collections. Talking of Fox Collection, these are, I think these are all, yeah, they're all Fox Collection catalogs that I've just, I think they come out, how often do they come out? Maybe every two months or something? Anyway, Fox Collection. Let's go. Uh, what else have I got in here? I have some magazines. I don't have many magazines. There's Cross Stitch. World of Cross Stitch. Cross Stitch Crazy. Cross Stitcher. One of each. There you go. I've got some grid paper that I use for when I'm just wanting to design something simple. I'm not, not like I design a lot, but sometimes you have to work out lettering or whatever like that. So I find that... Um, 
graph paper. It's fabulous. So I've got a couple of different ones there. What else have I got here? Oh, some more graph paper. Yeah. All those in there. These are some spare project bags that I have. Oh, that's got Mia in it. That's got the Mia Mirabilia chart in it. Anyway, um, so they're project bags that I use. I might show you these. I'll get these down. So these are my folders that I keep. <coughs> so these are just some folders that I keep bits and pieces in. So the first folder I have is conversion charts and things. So I've got my DMC to Mill Hill printed off there. I've got DMC to Anchor. I've got Karen Water Lilies. Just showing all the colours and numbers. Um, I've got uh, more Karen Water Lily. Uh, whether they're watercolours, um, whether they're water lilies. What are the other ones? You know her different ranges, which colour numbers they can. Um, just some brochures and cards from suppliers. This is uh, Petite Treasure Braid to Krennic. So those are my conversion charts that I just keep in there. Then I have another folder which is full of charts I've completed. So I will try not to show you. Say hello to the cat. Yes, don't get that in the way, puss. So I will try not to show you charts, and if I do, I'll edit them out. But, you know, good luck if you're going to print them off and what you're going to see here. You anyway, know, so these are all things that I've stitched. So there's Peter Rabbit, Peter Rabbit, which was a cushion I did a couple of years ago. My Beatrix Potter. Another Beatrix Potter bookmark. There is Gypsy Queen in there, signed. Oh. So I just keep them in there because that's one... These are charts that I wouldn't sell and they're a bit of a, um, I guess they're a record of things I've stitched. So Gypsy Queen, I will keep that forever old, obviously. Um, there's my son's, uh, what is it? Christmas stocking <laughs> by Janlin. I stitched that for him a few years ago. So the charts in there. That's just a little rocking horse thing that I made for someone once. Nope, sharp. That's the design for my son's uh, birth, his birth sampler. I stitched that for him. Uh, there is, oh, that's my Pyrex Love cross stitch that you can download as well for free. Um, I stitched that as well. Uh, my Hawaiian wedding sampler, which I actually just showed you in my doorway. Oh, these are, um, I used to keep these cards with all my projects. Um, so I started, here we go, 22nd of June 2015, finished 4th of July 2015. Well, that took me no time, did it? 11 days. Uh, and it was stitched on light sand cashew. I believe that was from 123 Stitch. I used to keep those cards, but that was before I used the X Stitch app. Um, which is available for iPhone. I don't know if it's available for Android, but it's fabulous. And that's where I keep all that sort of stuff now. So I don't need to keep these cards anymore. So that's the Hawaiian wedding sample. Forget that. That's just a Semco chart. Uh, oh, that's the original. Well, you won't be able to read that. This is that cat, um, Siamese cat chart that I, my, was my grandmother's. Anyway, see how old that is. Um, this is the Christmas ornaments. What was that? Signs of Christmas ornaments. Ah, oh, they were cute, those ones. Um, Boy King, Tutankhamen by Jamlin, which I completed. And I, oh, that's actually another one of my favourite finishes. I was probably about 16 or so when I stitched him. And I've now got Nefertiti as a current whip. So Boy King is done. Um, oh, that's just a free little one that came from Fox Collection. You often get a free small chart from Fox. And that's another Santa free kit that came with Fox another time. Bathroom Humour. I stitched this one for my son. And I changed that little dog there. Sorry about the glare. But I changed the little dog to a cat. <laughs> the 
So I can have kitty. Anyway. Um, oh, get you back in. Um, so here is Save the Stitches, which I'm still working on. I've kept, I have printed these out because this is, I started working on this before I used an iPad. I might actually, when I get back to you stitching it, I might stitch it off the iPad so I'm not having to print off all of this. This is about half of it, I believe. It's about that much. So it's a lot of paper, um, but I have kept it. Um, so that's Save the Stitches in there. I'm about up to here. <laughs> I'm going to get that back out and stitch that soon because I love it. And it's just, it just has been pushed aside because I've just been so busy trying to get other things done and wanting to start new things and all of that. But Save the Stitches is fantastic. I will, it will be finished. It's, it's definitely not a UFO. I'm definitely still in love with it. It just hasn't seen the light of day in a while. Um, some Mill Hill kits that I did. I just keep the leftover floss in here, I don't know why. I mean, I wouldn't, see the thing is, floss that's left over from the kit, I wouldn't use it for anything. I would never just, I, I, I wouldn't use it, unless I guess I wanted to stitch these again and make them into pillow ornaments or something, but there wouldn't be enough floss to do them all over again. So anyway, I don't know. I just kept them in there with the chart. <clears throat> uh, this is Spring Butterfly. That's me colouring it in with a highlighter, trying to work out what um, how I was gonna, what colours I was gonna use to stitch it. And I've obviously got some the weak stylus tags in there, so I remember what I used, but I do remember what I used because it was a turquoise. Anyway, oh, focusing is issue. Sorry about the glare. Whatever. Anyway, that was out of Just Cross Stitch magazine, and um, it's just a printout. Uh, that's a little home crazy home dimensions kit that I printed, that I printed, that I stitched for a friend when she moved into a new house. And there's my sweetheart tree, the spawning chart. Uh, there is home sweet home. I stitched that recently and I really like that. That hangs in my kitchen. I found that at a garage sale for 50 cents, that kit from Cross Stitch Crazy. Uh, this is Poo at Play that, um, my friend Julie and I stitched for a friend for her baby. We made it into a birth sampler. And there is um, another birth sampler I stitched for a different, another friend. Um, very cute, this. Baby feet, I think it's called. Yes, baby feet. I printed that. I printed it. I stitched that for another thing for a birth sample. So that's just where I keep mainly charts from kits, you know, that I've stitched and I keep them as, as a bit of a memento of, of that. So that's what that folder's about. And this folder here has got some charts that I've printed off. They're, most of these are freebies that I've printed off and haven't stitched yet. So this is the DMC Star Dust Fairy by um, Joan Elliott. It's available on the DMC website and I printed that off ages ago because I really like it. I don't know if I'll ever stitch it or when or what, but there it is. Um, this is a great website. I think it's it might be the website that actually links in with Cross Stitch Crazy and World of Cross Stitch and Cross Stitch Gold. I think they're all by the same people. And if you go to the website, www.crossstitching- no sorry www.cross-stitching.com they have these awesome charts that you can download for free and I've printed off a few of them over the time that I just sort of keep aside really good I think for nice cards and other little bits and pieces there's the cat again um some really cute card designs that I just have printed off to keep um Another one, this is another, I'll just put my hand over it. The Tiny Modernist is another great website for free charts. Tinymodernist.com. That's a little bird I stitched. I've already stitched that for someone. Um, anyway, good free charts. Another free chart. I really like the butterfly. I kept that for a project one time. 
This is another one from the DNC website. I love stitching. More from crossstitching.com. They're really cute, aren't they? How good are those cards? They're amazing. Um, oh, try not to show. Sewing machine. That's cute. Put my hand over it. I stitched that one for Carolyn for her birthday. I'm covering it. It's really cute. Um, this is another one I stitched for Carolyn, and I can't show you it because it's just the chart, but it's called Merry Stitchmas. Oop, you'll never be able to get it from that glare. Anyway, that's from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. Ah, try not to show charts. Stitch this card for Julie. I think I did that colorway for my friend Julie for her birthday. More freebies, more freebies. I stitched that one for Tara. Hi, Tara. That was another ornament from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. These are cute. Uh, oh, there's my frame. That's my frame. American Dream. Can we talk about American Dream products? Easy Stitch. They're going out of business. They're closing down. I love my frame. I'll show it to you. It's right here. It's got Celtic on it at the moment. As if you can stitch from that with a little chart. Anyway, I love my scroll frames. And unfortunately, <laughs> they're closing down. I think they may have closed down now. Or the end of this month. Anyway, so I'm going to have to come up with some other solution for my no base system eventually. Hopefully I'll be able to just get some kind of Velcro that will work with it. I hope. I don't know. I think I can hear the cat eating some of my cross stitch. Let me know. I'll just go check. Hold on. Remember that floss that I just tossed over my shoulder and said I need to throw that out? Yeah, well, the cat found it. Bloody cat. Anyway, so a little bit heartbroken. <laughs> Cat's gone a bit sucker. Yeah, anyway, these guys are going out of business. And I probably should have bought some supplies off them before they closed, and I didn't. So, anyway. That's... Okay, the cat is gone berserk. Anyway, where are we up to? Charts, I can't really show you because they're from Just Cross Stitch. Oh! I'll edit that out. <laughs> this is a Hardinger card from Just Cross Stitch. Another freebie there. Whoa, that's so cute. Where's that one from? I have no idea. Oh. CreateAndDecorate.com Really cute Christmas town quickly. Woo! Such a quick blur you'll never get anything from that. Um, classic cameo. I stitched that. I've stitched that as a card. Here's another Elizabeth Arman design. That was a Just Cross Stitch magazine. I've got a subscription to their digital magazine and I think it's fantastic it's just the kind of charts I like and the right size and I've stitched so much from it I haven't stitched this and if I do stitch it I won't stitch it in green but it's very pretty um some more that I can't really show you because they're charts there's another one from the tiny modernist I've stitched that before more cute little things there's a biscorny chart from that website Look how cute that is for a card. Oh my goodness. Pretty in pink. Vintage Kitchen. I've had this set aside as a chart. I'm going to stitch forever. And quite a few people have actually... <laughs> quite a few people have actually sent me this link and said, Oh my gosh, Pyrex Stitches, you would totally love this chart. It's Vintage Kitchen. And I do. I've already picked it out and it's been sitting in my stash for ages. Because it is a little bit... Um, I don't know, it's not Pyrex, but it's cool. I do like it, and I will stitch that one day. That was in Just Cross Stitch as well. More charts. Um, okay, so this is pin broidery. If you haven't done pin broidery, it's pretty fun. Christmas baubles. Can you see that through the glare? It's all right, it's a chart. You shouldn't really look at it. Anyway, it doesn't really matter if you see this because it's free. Anyway. If you ever want to get into pin embroidery, if you want to know what it is, um, it's really easy. Look it up. There's lots of free charts. How cute are these? Button cards. Oh, I love that. I love the colours in that. I'm going to stitch that for someone one day. And that one. I wish the glare wasn't there. Oh, that's annoying. Probably more annoying for you than me. Um, oh, and this one. I will have to stitch this one day too. 
by Ursula. It has to be. Of course it is. Ursula Michaels. Oh my god, look at that. Cross stitch lover. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I'll do that one. These are my one days. These are my no immediate plan charts. But they're there. Anyway. So that's my folders. Okay, I've got to stand up again. Okay, so um what else have I got in here? Some more magazines. Oh, this one here, I will show you this quickly. So this is, um, oh, I got it wrong. I said it was Better Homes and Gardens that the um, unicorn came from, but it's not. It's this magazine, Cross Stitch, May 1996. Oh, I think I stitched just about every single design from this magazine. Let me show you. Oh, oh gosh, that was graceful. I'm trying to get it where there's no light. Anyway. When I grew up on a farm, it was very hard to come across cross-stitch stuff. And let's face it, in the 90s, it was pre-internet, so none of us really came across cross-stitch very much. And it was limited where you could access stuff. Anyway, my mum bought this magazine. It was the only magazine I think we had that was dedicated to cross-stitch. And I just loved it. I stitched everything. I've stitched this um, Snakes and Ladders board. I stitched that for my son. If you want to see that, I'm pretty sure I, you, I did, see, in my, in my first, I think it might have been my second video I ever made, I showed all my finishes that I had at the time, and I show this um, Snakes and Ladders board, I stitched it on navy blue Ada, and it's really cool. Anyway, so I have stitched that, I've stitched this, and I love it too, I think I stitched it in 1995. Or was it? Hang on. Now, this was from Better Homes and Gardens. Right, okay. That's where I was confused. So, this is torn out from Better Homes and Gardens, August 1992. And I'm pretty sure I did it in 1995. And it's still one of my favourite things. And I absolutely love it. And I also showed that in my second video. And I came, Mum was going through her stuff and she came across the, the um, chart that we ripped out. And... Yeah, I'm really glad I've got it. I know my mum stitched that. I know she stitched that. <laughs> I know we stitched every, just about everything out of here. Whoop. Anyway, they're just some really old school charts that you might, you might recognise as well. Oh, that's really cute. Home sweet home chart. Anyway, maybe some tear outs. Um, yeah, this magazine, there's the unicorn that I stitched. And yeah, I'm pretty sure just about everything I'll show, I will do this without showing charts because I mean, this is an old magazine and I'm not giving my copy up. Um, look at this stuff, so 90s, love it. Oh, my mum stitched that. Pretty is a picture, it's cool. I stitched that and I'll show it to you shortly. Look at the colour charts. Aren't they awesome? I love colour charts. I know a lot of people don't. I do. Um, letters. Sure, I stitched that at some point. Actually, I don't think I did. Um, didn't stitch that. We're not in the morning of May, so why would I stitch that? These 90 people. Oh, so cool. My mum stitched that. <laughs> You didn't have much to stitch. You had to stitch what you had. Didn't stitch that. Look at those cards. I forgot I had those cards. They're kind of, they're easily adaptable, aren't they? Oh, there's Home Sweet Home. And I think that's got, that will have the pattern for sampling. Yes, it does. And look, I, I stuck on the colours because I wouldn't have had the DMCs to do it, I would have just um, got whatever mum had in a stash, which would have been bits of DMC and Semco and Anchor and whatever. Oh, I love that I still got that chart because it's, yeah, awesome. Such fun to stitch. Oh, there's the snakes and ladders. Love the chart on that. Love him. There's my unicorn. One page has been ripped out. There's my new torn. Oh, I love him. Oh, there's the chart. Oh, I just love those colours. 
Oh, there you go. <laughs> Four pages. And that was a lot of white. Remember, do remember stitch with the white. But great charts, nice and colourful. And that's probably about it. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that magazine because so 90s. Awesome. So that's what you need if you want to stitch. If you want to stitch um, the unicorn or any of that stuff, cross stitch May 1996. And if you want to do, where is it? If you want to do this, which was what was it called? I don't know. I don't know what it was called. Country sampler, I think. If you want to stitch that, you have to track down Better Homes and Gardens, August 1992. Good luck with that. Anyway, that's some old magazines. Okay, um, so my magazines, just some couple, couple of little books, cross stitch cards, Australian cross stitch. There's my DMC color chart. This is the one with the actual threads in it. I got this years ago. I got this in 1997. Look at that with the actual samples. Doesn't have the new colours, but it's still fantastic. I love it. Love, 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 love. I got that in year 12 when I did cross stitch for my art major work. Um, sorry for making you seasick. <laughs> uh, I've got a new, there's a bookmark in there. I've got the new DMC colour chart, that's just the printed one that you can get from 123 Stitch for like eight bucks. And that's about it. Ah, so that's that. Um, I'll show you what's on the floor. First, I've got a lamp. Oh, that's some more um, phone call board back there. I bought a whole sheet of the stuff. I'll just keep that back there. That's one of my lamps, it's kind of a bit of a spare one at the moment fits in here nicely it's good for traveling because you can detach it and make it into a table lamp and yeah um, there's my cutting board some soft fill for doing whatever that's that's just an old sewing kit and my sewing machine is under there as well and some tote bags and whatever stuff back there um, so I keep my frame on the floor here at the front um, keeps it away from the cat, away from a five-year-old, and all of that. I'll just move that out of the way. And this is my sewing box that I carry around with me around the house. This goes everywhere with me. Um, so I stitch in. We've got two living rooms. We've got a family room, and we've got a more of a I don't know lounge room where we watch movies and whatever. And um, so I, whatever project I'm working on, I put in here. And that goes with me. So I guess I'll show you what I have in here. So I have a project bag of some kind. Try not to show you the chart, it's a bit hard. Celtic Christmas is in there. That's where I keep a petite treasure braid and the beads. And I've got the floss in here because I've um, basically finished it. I've only I'm only using one bead and the metallics now to finish her off. So I normally have my floss in the floss box, but I've put them back into my stash for now. So there's that. There's my oat jar. Almost full. It's been going for about three years. Um, there is my needle book. With my needles in it. All my, my three sizes that I use. And my beading needles at the back. Beading needles. So that stays in there. And... A pair of scissors which are floating around and my little tin which is I stick my needle minders on there and I keep my scissors my thread heaven my DMC numbers um, oh I have to sit down now squatting hurts <laughs> So I have some thread heaven in here. I've got some beading needles. I've got 
that's a needle threader. It's magnetic as well. My DMC numbers. And more scissors. That's a pacer, a pencil. Find very handy. And my um, trolley needle. Or laying needle or laying tool or whatever. Don't use it all that often, but sometimes it's handy and it's good to have on hand. So that's my little tin. Strawberry shortcake. Why not? So just my necessities. Quite minimal with my accessories. So they all just fit nicely in there. I can also fit a few snap in there and um, the other bits and pieces, whatever. And off I go. Okay. I might stay sitting because I'm going to pull things down. So I bought this set of cubes from Bunnings, which is a hardware store that is everywhere <laughs> in Australia. It's like Home Depot. And um, along the top, I have these beautiful tubs. I don't know, tubs, baskets, woven beautiful things that I got from the Reject Shop, which is like a $2 shop, cheap shop. And this is my whip one. Bit of a theme with the turquoise and pink, do you think? Well, I tell you, well, you would know this if you watched any of my other videos and you see what's in the background with my Pyrex is that pink and turquoise is pretty awesome. Um, so I have, I've made two project bags so far using Vonna's tutorial and I'm going to make more. I just haven't gotten around to it. I've showed these to you before. Anyway, um, this won't be a whip parade. It's more just a brief look and see what I've got. Um, so this one matches my project bag. That's got my Santa banner in it. Um, it won't be a whip parade, so I won't show you that too much. Um, that's got red in it. So I'll show you what a typical... This is probably a pretty good example of how I organise my stuff. So in this project bag, I have my... This is for red. So there's red, which is a current project, signed by Nora. Uh, so the chart will be in the bag. I just received these from Janet, um, local supplier, JK Costage Supplies. And here, here I've got all the beads and the two water lilies. So there's all the beads. I also have my working copy, which I'll put aside. I go off a paper chart or sometimes I go off my iPad. On this one I'm going with my paper chart. I have a floss box. So, I will print out, make a copy of the, um, what do we call this? The key. <laughs> and I stick that in the lid of my floss box. I really like this size. It tends to fit exactly what I need in it without a problem because I don't do, I don't generally do massive projects with huge number of colours normally. <laughs> until I show you my mermaid. Um, so this size box works really good. So I can easily look at my chart and then look at my symbol and pick my color. So these are the ones which have been bobbinated because I've already used, I've either used these already in the um, project or um, they were already bobbinated when I pulled them from my stash. Some spare bobbins in there ready for colors those things because I haven't put them anywhere else or the cat hasn't got to them. So there's that. Um, what else is in here? Oh, the rest of the floss that is not yet bobbinated. And all of that. So all those colours yet to be bobbinated so I will just bobbinate them as required. I find that then bobbinating doesn't take any time and I don't need to use a bobbinator. I just sit there and wind it on and it's all done in no time. So that's everything in my beautiful project bag. Another one of those things. The cat loves these. Puss, puss. Puss, puss, puss.
Here she comes. The cat's dream. What? <laughs> um, yeah, so that is typically how one of my project projects are organized. That's how I will do them. Um, yeah, I'll just set that aside and sort that out in a minute. Actually, I'll just turn the video off and sort it out so the cat doesn't eat it. I'll be back. Okay, so there are my two project bags and that shows you how I organize them. And I will be making, uh, I think I need to make at least another half dozen of these bags so I have one for every project. And then the plan is, rather than having this beautiful box, and I know it's beautiful, but what I'd ideally like is for these to just sit like that. And I'll have, you know, I guess I can fit eight or so in there. And that's about, I think, my maximum number of projects. Anyway, so that's how I will have them. And I'll probably make some kind of tag, which I've seen others make. Was it Letitia who was showing the tags on the project bags? Love those. So I'll have some kind of little tag or something on them so I can just... I mean, I remember what project it is in each bag because they're all going to be different. But anyway, they're awesome. Get on and make some project bags. They're really fun and they're really easy. If you're not a sewer, like this is a great way to like give sewing a go. Um, I mean, I've got a sewing machine down here. I think it's a Janome. I don't know. I've had it for years. Um, I know that Pam makes hers on a really like a vintage Singer sewing machine just the most basic sewing machine with just you know one kind of stitch and she makes these project bags with that so you don't need anything fancy if you've ever wanted to start sewing and like me my sewing is generally stuff that is related to cross stitch so I will sew things I will sew cushions or project bags or project rolls because they're related to cross stitch but so if you want to get into it and you can afford to buy just a, you wouldn't even need anything fancy just a basic sewing machine they're really fun. Give it a go. Anyway, back to my whips. So these are my other current whips. I'm not doing a whip parade, but just showing you how I organize. There's Nefertiti, there's Save the Stitches, there's my Teresa Winsler Mermaid, there is um, a little embroidery one that I've been working on, and there's just some Christmas ornaments I've got organized, and I've got another magnet there. Um, I've showed you these before, but this is my Paco thread organizers which I need for my mermaid because there are so many blended and so many colors and anyway so I use those for her Woo! <laughs> whipping these around so that's for Teresa oh, yeah Teresa and that's my little project box for that embroidery kit that I'm doing so that are uh, that's my whip box I don't have any whips do I how many have I got one two Three, four, five, six, seven. Well, in Celtic Christmas, oh, eight with Celtic. Celtic Christmas is going to be finished like today. Um, that's a proper project. Save the Stitch is an ongoing one. That's a proper project. That's not even cross stitch. That's just, that's embroidery. So that doesn't really count. And that's not really a project because that's just Christmas cards that I'm just doing for whatever. So actually, I have one, two, with those two up there, three, four, five, six, and one. So I'm only going to have five soon ones. I need more whips. Um, okay, this is my chart box. Talking of more whips. So, um, sorry, I've got my pajama pants on. <laughs> I'm having a lovely day at home today. My son's at preschool. My husband has just started his second day of um, a new job and he loves it. And I'm actually at home on my own, which is really unusual. And I'm like so excited. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna do a stash cupboard. Anyway, so I'm hanging out in my PJs and talking to you guys. So it's really fun. Anyway, so this is my box that I call charts. And this is what I have um, charts, which are, these are um, not freebies, so they're charts that I've, like, because the ones that are in that folder are ones that I've just printed off for free. That's what they are. So these are either charts I've bought or they're kits or they're 
almost kitted up. They're on the way to being kitted up. There, there is a plan to start these at some point in the future, but no set date. I mean, it might be five years time, but there's not many. Anyway, oh, I'll show this in my next video, but I just bought this for five bucks. Told in the gun, Rosemary Homecoming. You all know it. Awesome. Uh, I've got my little house needleworks that I got from Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Sent that to me. I'm going to make that. It's so cute. Look at that. This will be my first little house needleworks. I would say this will be my first primitive design from the, uh, would you call little house needleworks prim? It's more cottage, isn't it? I don't know what you classify this as, but I think it's the first of whatever this is classified as first chart that I will be doing. I oh, it's not really like Macintosh milk. Anyway, I don't know. Oh, and that's a little bit like it too. Oh, hang on, my taste might be changing. Anyway. Oh, I've showed you this before, but I'm still not over it. My stomach is rumbling. I think I'm going to need some morning tea. Um, this is Mermaids of the Deep. All of this that I got for two bucks. Have I showed this on my video yet? I'll have to look back and see. And if I haven't, I'll put it on my next video. Yeah, I know. Two dollars. Shut up, right? I know. I'm going to be starting that in November for Movember, hey, Movember, in the Mirror Mirror group on Facebook, Stitch Along, totally going to start that, very exciting. Uh, there's another Nora, Nora Mirabilia I have, that's my three, or oh, my four Mirabilias I have. That's White Christmas, I will start her as well, she's actually really beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen anyone stitch this one. I think on a different fabric the background is going to stand out so much better and look at that beautiful snowflake she's holding and this might be able to be a companion to Celtic Christmas something I bring out at Christmas I would love that I would love to have pieces I bring out at Christmas like this ah anyway I don't know how many times I've showed this on a video actually I don't know how many times I've showed both of these in a video I know that I planned to start these for Stitch Mania two years ago and didn't. And I I will stitch them. I still love them. I, isn't that funny? You can look at a chart and years later you think, I still love that chart. I'm still going to, I'm going to stitch both of these. These are in here because I've already got, I've got fabric for that. Okay, now I feel ridiculous. That's probably lamb's wool. See, now I feel ridiculous. Now I'm thinking, why haven't I started this? Let's start that. Fabric. Oh my gosh. I showed these all on recent videos because I got them recently. Look at that. Ribbon embroidery. Just a little book of Joan Elliott designs. This is just the chart and it's a no count cross stitch, but I am going to work that damn thing out. It must have been a printed thing. I'm going to make it a counted cross stitch. How cute is it? If you sprinkle when you tinkle, please be neat and white. See? I live with a boy and an older boy. A man and a little man. Oh, see, why haven't I started this? I want to start that. Mill Hill. I want to start that. Oh. I want to start this. I bought this on eBay for five dollars like three years ago. I could stitch that in. Ugh, I'll stitch all these. Bought this for like 50 cents. It's like a stand up ornament with felt and plastic. <laughs> Love it. Oh, here's another one I want to stitch. Look at this. This is annoying. Made to measure. Look at that thing. It's meant to be a coaster, but I'm going to make that into a pin cushion. Look at that. And I've even got a bit of even weave there to do it with. What's that from? Cross Stitcher, March 2015. I think it was a free chart on their website. Everything in here I love. Everything in this box is stuff I love, and that's why it gets to be in this box, because it's things I will stitch. 
I will stitch everything in here. I can't buy anything else. This, you know what? This made me laugh and I don't know, countless numbers of people have eaten in this kitchen and gone on to lead normal lives. I think this is really funny. I don't know why. Um, garage sale. Look at that. Learn a craft. Busy hands, happy hearts. Now, I'm saving this. I feel like I might save this for someone who says it's his ideal for beginners. I feel like I'm just saving this because one day I'll be able to give it to someone to learn to stitch. I've already, I already did that. I already taught my good friend. I'll talk about it in my next video. But I just gave a small kit to a friend and she stitched it and she loved it. And now she's coming to our cross stitch nights. And oh, it's fabulous. So I feel like I'm just keeping this because I love it. It's on 11 count Ada, but this would be fantastic for a beginner because it's got back stitch and doesn't have quarter stitches, although it should. But for a beginner, um, it should have fractionals. But, you know, like that's awesome. Um, I've already stitched that. But I don't know what to say. Look at that. Look at that dinky little house. 3D country cottage from, cro from Cross Stitcher. My friend gave me this. She went mental and laminated everything she owns. Um, it's got a chart on the back and how to assemble it. Oh my. Shut up if that's not the cutest damn thing ever. I want to do that. And what have we got in here? Well, these should be my other files. Baby borders. Oh my. Look how gorgeous. Look at those things. Baby design, look at the moo, moo moo cow. Here a moo, there a moo. Oh, my stomach, I need food. Look at that little putter putter stuff. Cute. Oh, here we go. Here's my dirty little secret. You want to see what's at the bottom here? <gasps> Do you remember this? <laughs> if you've been watching my videos for three years, you will recognize this. This is Green Tree. That's what I called it. I don't know if that's its name. It's Asian. I don't know what it's called. I called it Green Tree. Now this was a kit I bought for like 10 bucks, free postage. And I thought, I'm going to stitch that. It's amazing. Look at it. And it is amazing. But you know what? I'm not made for this sort of stuff. It's all in there. I think... Mate, I'm going to open it and show it to you. Hold on. Okay, so, Green Tree. I think my mum has shown interest in maybe... Where's my toe? Sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm sitting on tiles. It's really uncomfortable. Um, I think my mum may finish this for me. Maybe. It's just too big for me. I'm, it's just not me, okay? And I mean, look at it. It looks cool, right? It, oh, now maybe I do want to stitch it. Okay, this is a really weird little thing I'm doing here, doing this video, because it's making me look at my stuff all over again, and I'm like, maybe I do want to stitch it. Because look how much I, I mean, I've only, it's like four pages. It's a bit gappy on, you know, one of the reasons I hated it is because that's 3371, and, oh, my stomach. I'm going to have to edit out a lot of stomach numbers. 3371, I don't like. But I've done most of it. Look at my parking. Look at my beautiful parking. Look at that. That's textbook parking there, people. Textbook. <sighs> I have to ponder that. What do you reckon? I mean, I'm not a full coverage bat person. I'm not. And I know it's not like I have an earth. I mean, that's on 14 count. And that's how big it is. So it's not, you know, still, now I'm looking at it. I mean, I put this into the UFL pile. Oh, it must have been two years ago, surely. I don't know. We'll have to, we might have to um, reconsider its fate. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I'll pack it away and we'll come back. Okay, we're back. So, um, 
Up there I've got card making. Oh, oh. I don't do a lot of cards, but you kind of need bits and pieces for it. So I've got a dedicated thing. One of those slide cutters, they're pretty cool. Um, I've got some papers in there. They're just papers, pretty, they're pretty cool. Um, and I've got little kits and card sort of appropriate stuff. Um, just like that paper. Some more cardstock. Uh, yeah, just sort of bits and pieces. Some aperture cards. Oh, see that? Okay, that's a um, pin embroidery that I was talking about. That's pin embroidery. That's not a card I made. That's a card that Carolyn made for me. Um, but that's pin embroidery. It's really fun. And yeah, just some little things, some little blank cards. Oh, there's a card for Tara. So this is like bits and pieces. Hi, Tara. Um, yeah, just envelopes and blank cards and cardstock and all that sort of stuff. More colored paper, envelopes and things. So yeah. Once again, the only cards that I make are for cross stitch. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't really do any other kind of cards. So, Woo! I'll just put this away so I don't make you dizzy. Next shelf, I've got my cross stitch. This is what I call my cross stitch sewing box. Um, love it. And in here we have sort of things that are more related to cross stitch. I mean, these aren't related to cross stitch, but I love them because they're vintage. And they were my mum's. And look at the colours. Aren't they amazing? Just keep them in there because I don't actually want to use them. I just love them. <laughs> I'm not much of a hoarder, but there are some things that I just got to keep for no reason. Needles that I don't use anymore because I don't, I prefer Bowen. I don't really use 24s much anymore, but anyway. Crafty Frog. That's an awesome store in... Canberra, if you're in Canberra and you know about the Crafty Frog, great store. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Bits and pieces. Once again, more needles I don't use, but they're there if I need them. Some clovers, some James, John James, tape measure, markers, sharpie, blah, blah, blah. So they're, yeah, they're not really needles though. Use. Oh, well, I use the buttons, so they're there as spares, I suppose. Um, I think these are actually now... I think these are all needles from kits. You know how you always get a needle in a kit? Yeah. Needles. That I don't really use because I'm a Bowen girl, but whatever. Um, buttons. Needle for my sun when he's doing stuff another a new thread heaven i found i didn't even know i'd had it and i found it the other day i was so excited you want to see what new brand new thread heaven looks like it's amazing oh my gosh I get it open. untouched look at that saving that for a special occasion i know weird right stuff stuff that is a needle minder that broke because it was so damn strong it like ripped itself apart um, there's the magnets there. <laughs> uh, uh. Um, there's my bulk bowens. And just a little tin. And then, oh, these are cute. I really like these. These are buttons I got from Spotlight, which are all sewing sort of thing. They're just there to put on projects and whatever. Bits and pieces there. I've got my beads. I have a bead box. Spotlight as well. So, um, I've got all my mill hills. I cut the tags off the, the labels and stick them on there. These are from mill hills that have come in um, mill hill kits. And I cut the number off there. And So I've got those. I don't have a lot, as you can see, because I only buy them as I need them. And I haven't done a lot of beading, but they're good because you see the little boxes pull out. So, yeah. Got some random ones up here that I don't have numbers for. Some more randoms. 
some more mill hills i've got some seed soup as they call them which are mill hill seed soup i've got these from the retreat they're cool you can fish through those and get all kinds of goodies uh yeah and then i've got in here i've got my nymo thread which is awesome i haven't had a chance to use it much yet because i i've all my projects have already started using other methods but i will be using nomo it's like invisible thread but better and just some spare boxes and stuff in there so that's how i keep my beads watch the cat come and play with it ribbon and things because the ribbons are oh look bless you sharon um ribbon and stuff that i use for making ornaments and bits and pieces you all need stuff this is the box that my scissors came from at the retreat and my tape measure so i've just got yeah ribbon most of it's christmas i think bits and pieces in there um some little bits of christmas fabric for ornaments and stuff some really nice black and white fabric that my friend sent me years ago and i haven't had the chance to use but i really want to um, yeah, oh, this is another bead storage thing that I've never actually used. I've got some sequins in there, but that's kind of handy. I think that'll be good one day. I bought it and didn't use it. Some felt, some iron interfacing. Um, yeah, so just bits and pieces for making cross stitch stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's my sewing box. I won't go into that. That's just for the sewing machine. Boring, boring. Uh, this here is where I keep my specialty threads. I know that's all I have, right? I told you I'm not a hoarder. Um, yeah, so this is where I just keep my specialty threads and bits and pieces. So I've got some Cascade House, which is that has a um, project. As soon as I get the pattern, I'll start that. Uh, bits and pieces. I've got uh, this is this fluoro stuff. I can't remember what it's called. Fluorescent effects by Dean C. Got my leftover floss from um, Battle of Hastings in there. Oh, I've got some beautiful ones here that Sharon sent me. Oh, they're so gorgeous. Those are from Sharon. Sydney Stitcher on Instagram. Follow her. She's lovely. Lovely. She's more than lovely. So look at that one. Oh, I showed them in my last video. So they are just some from Sharon. And my Mo Sale bag of that. Some more fluorescent effects. My only Karen Water Lilies, apart from the ones that I've just bought for red. These are left over from Gypsy Queen. You can see how much you, you don't use. Um, so they do cost, I mean these are these were $13. Um, I don't remember where I got these from. I can't remember where I bought these ones from, but uh, I think I paid ten dollars from Janet recently, but she's cheap. But you can see you, you don't use much, so you know they're pretty good value in that sense, I suppose. Um, oh, that's the other one. There's three water lilies. There's some whisper that's left over from Gypsy Queen. A lot of whisper left over from Gypsy. Turquoise left over from uh, butterfly spring butterfly. A little bit of that left. Look at these bobbins from um, San Joy in France. They're cool. Um, some petite bread, treasure braids left over from Gypsy. I've got a Madeira metallic here. I've got a bag of, what's this say? DMC stocking. <laughs> That's the floss left over from my son's. DMC stocking. Oh, stocking DMC. This is DMC. Okay, genuine DMC. Some more. Oh, that's um, that's some wheat dye work. So I have to remember what that name of that is. Yeah. So I'm just some random metallics down there. So that's just my metallics and other floss. Oh, so you can see not a lot. Not a stasha, but I certainly love it. <laughs> I'm just tight. <laughs> um. But look at, I mean, these are just, this, this will make you addicted to floss. Look at, I mean, they're just, oh, blah, my friend. Oh, 
I just want to find something to use that on. It's just incredible. Look at that. It's ridiculous. I really, really like these, um, what are they, cottage garden threads. I see them around a bit lately. And the colours are just, look at that. Blow your mind. You can see what I like, can't you? Bright colours. Oh, love it. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm just rambling. This is how I talk in my head. Uh, okay, here. Oh, I can reach it. Gosh, I hope you're not sick. I hope you haven't. I hope you haven't got a throw-up bag. Um, oh, look at this box. So this came from Tara, my dear friend in the States, when she sent me, when she, oh, no, come here. Come here, gorgeous cotton thread. Oh, my God. So when Tara became my floss fairy and sent me my full set of DMC, she sent them in this box because, why wouldn't you? Isn't it beautiful? It's one of my favourite things. Um, I think these comes. From, I think these are available at Joanne's. I've seen some other people with them. We don't. We can't get anything like this in Australia. Just so you know. See this? We can't get this. So this became my fabric box, which I don't have a lot of. Once again, but it is the perfect because it's just the right size. So I just got a bit of linen there. There's some 14 count Ada. I don't have a lot. Um, just some samples from Cascade House, Color Cascade. Sorry. Um, just some little samples there just to try out different types whatever um, this is a piece of is this picture this plus who's this yeah picture this plus called dill belfast 32 count wow it looks so different on camera it's much more mustard in real in real life and it looks almost greenish here but the mottling's really beautiful I haven't found a piece to stitch on that yet but I will that came from Tara as well thank you Tara samples um, there's some colour cascade fabric I bought a while ago called Barbie Girl and that's in 25 count I must have been feeling nervous about trying even weave I was hoping to stitch Gypsy Queen on this but the fabric size was too small um, so that is waiting for another fabric. I find it's not as soft as some of the other even weave, but the colours, I love Barbie Girl. Ah, yeah. That's just a random bit of Ada. This is a bit of cut off left over from Gypsy Queen. Gypsy Queen was stitched on Fairy Mist. 32 count. It's a little, little bit of little extra that was on the bottom. Some more accrue linen. <clears throat> some more from Spotlight, some 32, some more Ada, can't wait to use this fabric, oh, I bought this sewitall.com.au, their even weave is so beautiful and soft, it's just gorgeous, 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 and they are so well priced, um, this is called Violet Haze, <clears throat> excuse me, and I hoped to stitch Gypsy Queen on this, but it was also not quite big enough, but I didn't care. Um, I bought it in 28 count, probably should have got it in 32. And I didn't regret it, because it was like $14 or something. It was really well priced, and I just love it, and I will find something wonderful to stitch on that. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so just some more Ada and whatever in there. So that's all my fabric. You can see I don't have a lot of um, hand dyed because I do like to buy specifically for projects but sometimes you buy things and they just don't quite work out so that's the only reason I really have a um, stash of that <clears throat> excuse me um, in here this is just fabric I've got some DMC wool actually I got it at a garage sale one time that's just got fabric in it for um, project bags and whatever sewing <clears throat> this is what I call my framing box <clears throat> excuse me I've got more of these tubs I don't really have they shouldn't really be in here but I just really like them um, 
more interfacing, iron-on interfacing for a back of my projects. So this is what I use for framing and crafting and making things for my cross stitch. Um, this fabric tape's really good for using on the back of um, framing cloth tape. Um, got tacky glue. My knife, more tacky glue. Can't have too much tacky glue. Masking tape. Um, got my um, what are they called? Paper edges for card making or whatever. Um, I've got. Uh, wedding dress and lace pins for framing. They're no rust. Um, and then I've just got more of that sort of stuff. Tape. I've got my mat board cutter. Mat board cutter for cutting out the mats in your frames. It's actually really tricky to use. <laughs> so I try and avoid it. Um, yeah, just tape and hole punch and more dressmaker pins. Um, and this thing's awesome. If you don't have one of these, I know Vonna is a fan of these too, and they are just great for cutting fabric. If you're doing a, um, if you just need to cut a straight line for like trimming off your fabric when you're doing ornaments or project bags or whatever, oh, just get these vroom, straight across the cut. They're great. Anyway, so that's what that box is for. Just sort of odds and ends tools mainly for framing and making elements or whatever and then the last box is um uh, it's a it's a bit of a mixed bag really <laughs> it's just bits and pieces really i've got see i want to stitch something to mount on there i've seen tara c did a video where she mounted something on something similar paint it and so that's in there some frames and, uh, that should really go in the other box. Hoops. Oh, here's a project that I showed you before. So that stitch from that magazine. Stitched that when I was a kid. Don't know what I'll ever do with it. It's just sort of hanging out. Um, I've got more of my... That's the basting stuff for my frames. No base system for my scroll frame. Hoops, I've got highlighters, I've got more little framing hoops. Um, oh, those are my the index cards I used to write on, but I don't anymore. Um, these are little labels that you're using that Paco, Paco thread organizer that I showed you that my um, Teresa Mermaid Teresa Winslow Mermaid threads are on. So you can write the symbols and replace them. Those are the spare ones that came with it. I've got some Mirabilia um, postcards in there, more frames, my DMC horse head organizer, thread organizer. Got another one of them somewhere. Um, oh, a note from Claire, I've had that paper forever. Oh, these are plastic coasters that I was going to use ages ago and they didn't work, so I'll use them for something else one day. Um, the things you keep, right? That had bead soup in it <laughs> from Mill Hill. Highlighters. These are sort of things I don't really use anymore, but then you know I don't use them every day. The little lamp you can attach to your frame. It's not very powerful, so it's kind of almost useless really. <laughs> um, that's just some memo paper in there. Ah, oh, some Postcards from Sanjo, Sanjoy from France. This is where you buy Battle of Hastings, the kit. Just some postcards from them. More Mill Hill. Ah, oh, not Mill Hill. Oh, that's um, Villa. That's the one I know. Um, jo was trying to find her copy of the chart. Anyway, that's Villa. More paper. Note from Claire. Oh, some waste canvas. Got to use that one day. Just bits and pieces like that. You know how it is. You know how it is. Some scroll frame odds and ends. Some paper. Writing paper. So 
uh, yeah, it's a like I said, it's a bit of a <laughs> mixed bag. I don't know if that's even interesting looking at, but this is like looking into the mind of pirate stitches. Glasses cleaner? You know, you need these things, right? Oh, here's another lamp. I love giving these kind of things a red hot go. It's a travel lamp. Yeah. You never have too much light when you're a stitcher. Four little frames, and that probably would have been handy you to use now, wouldn't it? Little tripod, camera tripod. Yeah, so there you go. That little mixed bag of weirdness in there, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so that's kind of it. I mean, down in that corner there, there are some scroll frame bits and pieces. There's another camera tripod um, and that's kind of it so that's my craft cupboard that's a bit of a, a um, oh my gosh I feel really stiff and sore after sitting on the floor <laughs> oh my knee just cracked oh, look at those DMC's aren't they beautiful anyway so that's my craft closet I don't know how long this video is going to be once I edit out all the coughing and the tummy rumbling and me dropping stuff and whatever but um i hope you enjoyed it <laughs> i hope it's worth posting up i hope it's not bizarre it's far less um i think my normal videos are maybe a little bit more structured i think they are anyway oh well thanks for watching um i'm gonna finish celtic christmas today hopefully and i will hopefully post up a whip update video in the next week within the next week we'll say so um thanks for sticking with me thank you to um thank you to all my subscribers it's weird saying that but i've got um over two and a half thousand which is pretty amazing and i'm very grateful i'm so grateful for all the comments and the kind things and i i'm very lucky to have a really positive um floss tube experience i've never experienced anything negative at all and i'm so very very grateful for people's generosity and kindness and for bothering to watch because you guys watching me really motivates me and inspires me in my stitching so thank you so this is a bit of a i guess a thank you to people who might be interested in how i do my cross stitch how i store everything how i how my mind works, how I, I don't know, how I make cross stitch make sense to me in my storage world. Anyway, this is not normally an angle I've seen from me <laughs> sitting on the floor. But how cool did the DMC look? Ah, oh, beautiful. Anyway, until next time. <laughs>